What's going on? Today I'm trying something brand new. I'm using the continuity camera in Mac OS. So this is not from my like 4K camera setup. This is just from my iPhone. So I want to give it a shot. Uh, all right. Well, you're not here for that. What are you here for? You're here to learn about how to use GTP, GPT. I always get this wrong. GPT-3. It's a large language model. You're just a regular sales rep. How, what, a, you know, I can't, I can't code. You probably can't code. So how do you use GT, GPT-3 uh, and why would you use it? Well, I use it to classify case studies. So I had a bunch of case studies and a bunch of unstructured text, right? And I wanted to turn those into domains, right? Think about how long that would take an outsourcer. It, the data is in, a, is in a bunch of cells here. You got to go search the domain. It just would take forever. But GPT-3 is exceptional at this. So what we're going to go over in this video is how to take snippets of unstructured text. And by the way, there's two places where snippets can be really, really useful to you. First is if you have um, sort of small bits of information from your CRM that you want to classify, you can totally use that for this. The other place that's very interesting is if you use clay.com, clay.com can actually extract the snippet from a Google search result. So first I'm gonna go over my use case here where I use this to, to train a GPT-3 model to turn unstructured case studies into domains, comma separated domains. And then I'm going to talk about how you might use this inside of clay to extract sentiment from a Google snippet. So let's dive in. All right. So first, this is I got I got a hack here. Well, let's like move over in the center of the frame here for you. So I got a hack here. So I use this Richmond SEO training, right? And this guy is so nice. He like built this this spreadsheet. I love spreadsheets to be able to run G GPT three models for me. So I just copied his spreadsheet. So here is his spreadsheet, and. He's using it for SEO, but the interesting thing is you don't have to do it that way. So you give you give it a prompt, what you're looking to do. In this case, my prompt was turn this list of companies into a comma separated, separated domain list. So I had a bunch of data like uh, Apple, um, Bob.com and worked with Shopify too wow really hard right like what do you do with that well i told gpt3 i want an applebob.com and uh, shopify.com and i did this for each of these example training sets right you just got to train five here and so uh and then they tell you what to do here so you have to go get an api key it's really simple anyone can sign up and it's so cheap i mean i think there's like 18 dollars a month for free so you just paste in your API key here, and then you paste in your keywords here, and the classification, it's really simple. You do equals get GPT-3 uh, A2. That's how you do this. And then uh, I don't have an API key here, but then it will just actually take that unstructured text and give you, um, and you can just do that in any, any of the fields here. In this field, it'll actually give you that structured value. So let me show you exactly how I used it. Um, so this is the raw text. These are like companies that, um, like case studies, right? So I took this unstructured test. This is what it gave me back. Look at this. So amazing. And here's some example of books. Vice, Tonic, Sutter Health, Oscar Health, uh, uh, Lululemon. My friend calls it Lululemon. I'm like, come on, man. Uh, uh, AOL, Elite Digital. Look at this. Vice.com, Tonic, Sutter Health, Oscar Health. Uh, it knew. It knew. Um, Lou Lemon, Happy Rabbit. And so it's not perfect here. Like, actually, let's see if I think this is Oscar Health's domain, but let's like verify this. Perfect. See, redirected. So uh, it, it got it right. Let's see if, let's see if it, um, it did. Um, so it doesn't just convert things into, uh, into domains. It actually does have some context to be able to convert this right. It's not perfect. But like, like, for example, Wikipedia, right? Like this person said that they worked with Wikipedia, right? And so it knew it was wikipedia.org, right? Whoa, how cool is that? So it has that kind of understanding of the world. And so now what I can do with this is I'm going to actually go mine the world for connections here. Uh, but very, very fascinating stuff. So 
let me talk to you about a different way that you might be able to use this. Uh, and let's just go to, I'm going to make this up on the fly. So you're going to do this live with me. Site, I want to use glassdoor.com. Uh, so actually, this is a, uh, a, a, a query I was looking at earlier. No growth opportunities. So you can start to see, uh, we were doing some targeting for, what were we looking at? We were looking at companies that had like dead end jobs, right? So these are people that commented on Glassdoor that said there were no growth opportunities. So what I would like to do is actually, you can see how this is like actually mostly structured. And the good thing is uh, Google actually highlights the thing I care about. So with Clay, what you could do is actually map out this snippet, great starting out, but no growth opportunities, and actually say, give me, I wanna turn this into structured quotes. So like, for example, let's just like do one of these so you can understand what I'm talking about here. Let's go to this sheet, uh, settings, okay. Uh, example keyword, let's paste in the snippet. And you can get these snippets at scale with, with Clay, which is really fantastic. So let's like make this a little, whoa. All right, and let's wrap this here so we can look at it. No growth opportunities. So I want to say on, uh, I saw on June 3rd, 2022, that someone posted that there were no growth opportunities in tech support. Um, let's see, what else did they say? They provide, uh, there were no, yeah, okay, great. So now I've taken this unstructured text that Google is like pulling for me and I can have GTP3 write a sentence based on this. And the nice thing is that I, all I have to do is train five, 10, 15 of, actually all I have to do is train five of these and then I can drag down and GPT3 will write these sentences based on actual problems that actual companies have and how, the, how their people talked about it. So now you can take the world, you can sort Google by pain, and let's like, let me give you like a couple of other um, opportunities here to do this. Let's do linkedin.com slash jobs. So I just wanna search jobs. And then uh, let's see, what's a good sort of pain-based problem that we can come up with? Um, no code, uh, learn, <laughs> learn how to code, let's see. Mm, that's like not a good one. Let's see, first, let's do like first sales. I like this one. So this is like first sales director. So now what you can do is, I'm gonna give you one more example and then I'll, I'll leave you be here. Saw that you, that on this day on, you actually can map the date here. Uh, oh, Google doesn't have the date, it doesn't have the date, so saw that you recently hired for your first sales director. Look at that. Uh, so now you can take this and the good thing is that even though these are like your first sales BDR, your first sales hire, so you can train, uh, you can train the model to have a really good understanding of what the context of this is and use these proper nouns. And that's the best way to use ML today in your world. It's not ship ML off and say, hope for the best. It's really to give it very structured feedback on small snippets of text and then have it answer a bunch of structured questions for you. And if you can do that today, tools like GPT-3 will change the way that you do sales. All right. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for like, I know this like box is a little strange here because I'm trying this new continuity camera thing with my new Mac OS. So let me know if this is helpful for you. If you want, I will link you to the resources that I've shared above. Go to OpenAI, sign up for an account, and then start thinking in a way of how can I get the information that I want in small snippets of text, and then an ML model can translate those small snippets into really precise problems about who your customer, about what your customers are struggling with. So long as you pull your list this way, you cannot start with a company. You must start with how can I structure the world about the problems that exist 
and then find the specific examples of those problems and then let ML do the, the rest. And you can do this workflow without ever sort of writing a bunch of messages again and you can personalize about the problems people have. So this solves both problems here. You don't have to figure out what you have to say to companies because you're charging their problems and you don't have to actually write the piece that's most important, what you have found, because this unstructured text, GPT-3, can structure it for you. So this allows you to write at the list level by problems at scale and hopefully you'll be able to print more money with this tactic. Thank you so much for watching my content. I know everyone doesn't get this far. Everyone doesn't um, like or comment. But when I hear from you that you enjoyed this content, it means so much to me. And I have so much fun creating it. And I'm really grateful that you stuck around to watch to the end. Uh, and if you did, I will give you some free jobs data. So if you have some questions about your market and about problems they're struggling with, send me a DM directly. Do not comment on this because a lot of people won't get here. But if you did, I will give you some free data. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful weekend.